Marquez Valdez Scandling. Marquez, thank you so much for being with us and congrats on number two back to back. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. It's an honor. Of course. All right, let's get into this game. So uh, this is obviously your second straight Super Bowl going into the half with a double-digit deficit. Both times you come back. What is being said in the locker room at halftime? Uh, to be honest, not much, man. Um, we're, we're used to it. Um, we got a super resilient team. Uh, we've been battle-tested all year. And so just going in and say, hey, just be us, play a better second half, and we'll go out and win this game. Marquez. When I look at you guys, you had some struggles during the season, and I've been very outspoken about the wide receiver group. You had a lot of drops, but you had the big catch. You had two big catches in Buffalo. You have the big catch in uh, Baltimore. You have the touchdown catch uh, in the Super Bowl. What did Patrick or what did uh, Andy say to you guys when you the receiving core or your offense was going through some of the struggles in the regular season? Because I don't think outside of that locker room and your fan base had you guys to end up being in this position considering how you struggled offensively during the year. Yeah, I mean, we, we had pretty much the same group that we had last year, the same, you know, same playmakers that helped Pat win an MVP and help us win a Super Bowl. You know, so I think with us being able to go out and, you know, just be ourselves and, you know, get out of our own way, you know, that was the issue that we were having all year, just getting in our own way and being able just to be resilient and shake back. You know, we knew we had a special group and a special team, and so we won another Super Bowl. Marquez, you got the party started, so you scored the first touchdown of the game for the Chiefs. It was also your first touchdown in a Super Bowl. What's going through your mind, in your head, after you scored that touchdown? Let's get another one, man. Uh, they had a really great football team. Um, and we knew we had to score some more points to, to put that game away. Our defense was playing lights out. And we knew if we just scored a couple more touchdowns, we'd be able to win that game. Marquez, let me ask you this. On the, 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 uh, the game-tying field drive and the game-winning drive in overtime, what's being said in the huddle and what's Patrick demeanor like on those last two drives? Man, he was just calm and collected, man. We knew we were going to win that game 100%. Uh, we just needed some time to go out and do it. Um, I think that was the, the beauty of it, especially going to uh, the, the last two-minute drive and then the overtime. Um, we just had to go down and, and score, and we were just excited about the moment. Nobody was anxious. Nobody was nervous. Um, and when you got 15 back there, anything's possible. Yeah, it seemed like you guys were cool. I want to stay with the quarterback. So you played with two all-time greats, right? Aaron yeah. Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. What would you say, Marquez, is the leading quality in each guy that makes them so great? Man, they're both unique, um, but their competitiveness. Um, you know, I'm forever indebted to, to Aaron for jumpstarting my career. Um, he's just a great friend of mine, um, forever be a friend of mine. Um, we, he was one of the first people to text me after the Super Bowl to congratulate me, and tell me how happy he was for me. Um, and then with, with Pat, you know, his competitive nature as well. You know, you see it week in and week out, just willing his team to, to victories, um, just the fire that he has. Um, I played with two of the, the best to ever play this game. It was reported, Mark Webb, it was reported that EB came back in and he talked to you guys yeah. before the Baltimore game. And I felt that was a lot of what was missing was the accountability and the juice that he brought on a weekly basis being the OC. Was he able to come back in and talk to you guys before the Super Bowl, if you care to elaborate? No, nah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't come back and, and talk before the Super Bowl. But you know, right before that AFC Championship game, you know, just him taking his time out to come and just holler at the guys, man. Um, you know, we're, we're grateful for him. You know what he did here and how he helped us win a lot of games. Um, his his fire that he brings in, you know, it's, it's electric. And uh, he's one of those guys that the moment he walks in, he's just gonna demand the room. You know, he's five five, but he walks like he's six ten. Marquez, let me ask you this. So we all knew, right, Kansas City, we knew the offense was fire. The defense really stepped up this year. Just incredible. One of the youngest defense in the league. Next year, you're going to be going for the three-peat. We're talking yeah. real history there with the three-peat. Yeah. What's the most important thing that everybody needs to do to be in position to make that happen next February? Not get in our own way, man. I think we got a really special team. Um, it's going to be hard to, to three-peat. Um, but it was even harder to go back to back. And so I think that if we just you know, keep ourselves together, not get in our own way, um, just fix the, the pieces that we need to fix, um, I think we got a really good shot of, of doing it again. So in the locker room after the game, Andy bring you guys up. What's, what's he saying? Obviously, the emotion is the jubilation. Yeah. So what did Andy say after that game? 
man, he was just so elated. Um, you know, you don't really get a lot of emotion out of Coach Reed, you know, throughout the throughout the year. Uh, but you know, after that, after that Super Bowl victory, man, you could just see the the smile on his face and how happy he was. You know, just all the adversity that we faced all year. Just to see him be that happy, you know, just it, it almost brought tears to to guys' eyes to see, you know, all the hard work that he's put in. He's in this building more than anybody, um, you know, and he was just elated, elated. I heard Patrick say after the game, this is his most gratifying, his most satisfying mm -hmm. Super Bowl, considering all the adversity that you guys, from an offensive standpoint, went through this season. And being underdogs in Buffalo, being underdogs in Baltimore, being underdogs to San Francisco. Can you speak to what Patrick is talking about, how gratifying and satisfying this one is compared to the other one that you won last year? Yeah, I mean, last year was, you know, nobody, nobody believed in us, um, but we still were the number one offense in, in the league. And so, you know, people knew that we could score points, you know. So going into this year, you know, no one had faith that we would be in this position. Everyone thought that we couldn't score enough points to win. We couldn't go play these great defenses week in and week out to, to go out and win. And so being able to go back to back in this stage, um, you know, it was we, we earned that. And that can't ever be taken from us. Um, we're the best team in the NFL, and that showed on Sunday. MVS, I think it's fair to say that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs can play on the road. <laughs> Patrick yeah. Holmes still got it. I'm just thinking of all the narratives that we had going. Obviously, you got your second ring. Congratulations. But before we let you roll, the producers in the control room, they want to see this chain you got on. Can you? Oh, yeah, it? yeah. Can you yeah, now look at that. Chain for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Who yeah, made that for you? Hold on. Shot hey, hold on. Shout, shout your yeah. jeweler. Yeah, the Swiss my shop GLD, man. The boys got me right right after the bowl. Got me wow. right to, to make sure I got this one ready for the parade to, to rock on my neck. 